What's up, everyone? My name is Gothics, and for today's guest, we have Lily Tang Williams, a Chinese immigrant born and raised during Mao's Cultural Revolution, which she describes as a top-to-bottom orchestrated social justice movement where an estimated 20 million Chinese died due to Mao's toxic ideas and murderous policies. Lily, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really excited to have this conversation with you. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here to and collect with you and viewers. Absolutely. For those that don't know, what's your story? Uh, so you said you grew up in communist China. What was that like? I was born on, in the southwest of China province called Sichuan. Chengdu actually is the capital city. So I was born and grew up there. And two years later, the Supreme Leader Mao Zedong then launched a 10 years cultural revolution. Of course, I did not know anything about it. I was like 12, I mean, two years old and to 12 years old. And as I said, in my opinion piece, that cultural revolution, it was just absolutely horrible. We did not know the truth. And we just thought, hey, Chairman Mao was like a god. He become a god, like a political leader after he used that the political campaign, cultural revolution to purge his political enemies inside the party and outside the party. Then he used his typical, um, of course, uh, divide and conquer tactics to um, put all Chinese into 10 classes people. Let's say if Marxists believe people are divided by two groups like oppressors versus oppressed. So that's how he divided the people. So his cultural revolution is about use these young people idealistic and naive to trust him, believe him, brainwashed by him to say there are bad cultural influence in our society. You need to go to eliminate them. The oppressors classes have to come out to do all these uh, struck sessions by blaming themselves, public shaming and apologizing, self-criticism. The law enforcement broke down. Nobody could protect you. So if you are not going through the struck sessions correctly, according to red guards, rituals, you can get beat up and sent to educational camps. It was a horrible violence and chaotic. Same time, we we're starving. We were very poor, <laughs> living in poverty. People who don't know about the cultural revolution should really dig into that to see what happened. I'm just now learning about Marxism and the cultural revolution, and I don't know too much, but there were some things that I've picked up on in America. I can see some comparisons to things that happened during the uh, Cultural Revolution. So you mentioned Marxism, and I want to know, what is your take on the Black Lives Matter movement? Because I was a little bit taken aback when I found out that the organizers are trained Marxists. What does that mean to you? At the beginning, I saw the Black Lives Matter movement were just the peaceful protesters go out and uh, wanted to basically to deal with uh, some issues in our society. But later when they came out to say, oh, we are trained Marxist. Now I start to really be very cynical and cautious to say, what are they trying to achieve? So I start to follow more carefully and especially after last years, the riots, the looting, and then they top down the statues, they burned down their buildings and then they wanted to basically also ask for reparations for their past, their history of slavery. And just the ding, 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 ding. I feel like- Like red flags? Like, <laughs> yes, yeah, like that's like a cultural revolution because uh, then they start to categorize people too, oppressors versus uh, oppressed. We were encouraged to all become spies for Mao for the Chinese government. My neighbors say that, my family say that. It really to destroy all fabrics of our age-old civilization, Chinese culture. And they did burn down buildings, top down statues, destroy the cultural relics, burn, burn books. You go to the public struggling sessions to make yourself ashamed and apologize. Imagine those people in their 60s today, 
living with that guilt all their life. They could not get rid of that. How, how much they were brainwashed as teenagers to believe Mao, believe the Communist Party, and to go destroy their families. Oh, it's so sad, it's tragic. I would not want to see that happening on our American soil. I'm kind of going back in my memory and, and thinking of things that I've seen in the past few months. And currently right now, there's this big narrative that if you are a Republican or specifically someone that voted for Trump, there's a lot of, there's a lot of demonizing of that particular group. And I have gotten a lot of emails from people saying that, oh, my, my wife wants to divorce me. My friends stopped being my friends and people are pulling back and separating themselves from whoever voted for Trump. And then I also, during the Black Lives Matter, I saw some scenes of people raising their fists in the air and saying, like, put your fist up, you know, support, you know, BLM and getting in their face. And that's how yeah. I found out about the struggle sessions. So yeah, we did. Yeah, do this, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's scary. <laughs> it's a very, it's a terrifying to me okay because i lived through that time i recognize the tactics and i recognize the term lots of our young people are being you know propagandized and brainwashed they even don't recognize equity i like equality all men are created equal but when you use term equity racial equity that is marxist term that means uh, equitable same outcomes, same wealth redistribution. It is communism. We yeah. don't want that in this uh, country because uh, if you want to have uh, equitable outcomes, how, how can you make that happen? You have to take from the people who have it and give to people who have not. That's exactly Marxist theory. That's why when Black Lives Matter founders say, well, train the Marxists, it really scares me, really. It's like, uh, what do they want? They want to destroy America, destroy our culture, art. Look at the cancel culture everywhere. Even you're a Democrat, you could be canceled. If you're a liberal, you can be canceled. What do they want? What is the agenda? It's right. to destroy our basic civil, social, legal systems fabrics of our civil society to accomplish Marxism, socialism, and communism. But uh, instead, we all were being saved. And so what you said is correct. The typical tactic of communist Marxists, they want to install hate into your brain. So now, after January 6, every day you hear about how many people are arrested, lose their jobs, even musicians can be canceled, no business for you. And uh, because they want you to see those people as a target of their hatred, even though they're your fellow citizens who just voted for different president. That's okay, we have a constitutional republic, you have a voting right, lots of people in other countries never have that voting right. We should appreciate that. Right. But to target people who voted differently, than you and calling them all those bad names and arrest them and see them as domestic terrorists, as extremists. Why so many people support that obsession of Trump hate? Actually obsession for now, equity. That's a Marxist term. If we really have a full-blown Marxism in this country, 99% of people will be enslaved, will be equally poor, not like you say the equitable outcome. No, you'll be equally poor like we were under Mao and starving to death. That's the history lesson people should really be educated about. I found this research study that suggested the younger demographic of Americans, specifically Generation Z, find Marxism and socialism more favorable than older demographics. So that makes me think that there's some type of indoctrination happening in school. Would you agree with that? Or why do you think that it's so appealing to the younger folks? They don't teach real history. I have been going to schools, middle school, from sixth grader all the way to colleges to educate people, our youth as an eyewitness of communism, of Mao's cultural revolution. And whenever I tell my stories, and show my old pictures from China, 
as a young pioneer, red guard, and the tell them about struggle sessions and, and class struggles, they were just totally shocked. And even teachers tell me they teach social studies and history, they don't know some of the details. Think about it. if our teachers were not well educated on history and the horrors of communism and socialism, then how are they going to teach our children? I had one girl follow me out of a high school classroom one time to say she was shy. She did not want to stand up, ask me questions, but she was following me. She said, what do you mean under cultural revolution, you could not really have art anymore because some art are deemed incorrect. No comedy can go against communist party's narrative and can insult any political leaders, any party members. Imagine that happened to the United States. I see that in the shadow of the cancel culture. You cannot wear this clothes, right? You'd be cultural appropriation. You cannot name this product this name because that's cultural. It's like they're trying to cancel you. They're trying to shut down free speech and freedom of mind and the thought. See, as human beings, if you're free, you need to have a free thought, thinking for yourself instead of buy into propaganda of the left media, mainstream media and your politicians. But if you cannot say what you think, what kind of country are we gonna live in? The whole point of free speech in constitution is to protect you to say something people don't like to hear. Not like we agree, that's fine, but it's precisely for people to voice their opinions that are not in your liking, we can exchange ideas. And uh, that's how you come up with a smart solution to solve our society problems. But instead, our kids taught, believe in government, believe in media, and uh, silence the dissidents. I'm telling you, Darcy, you know, you're young, but I have uh, seen very similar stuff happen before. That's why I'm very loud to oppose this cancel culture and this critical race theory and the Black Lives Matter funders who are calling themselves Marxist. It's very dangerous. I've had my suspicions about cancel culture and political correctness because when people use those, I find that they're trying to achieve some type of utopia reality where everything is perfect and everything is happy and nice. And what I try to tell my audience is that a utopia will never exist. There will never be a perfect world. So when I see someone utilizing cancel culture or political correctness to try to make things good, I always sense a red flag because I know that it's a slippery slope from there where you'll have a small minority or even the government dictating what is and isn't harmful. And we even see it in comedy. You can't even enjoy a joke without someone's Oh, that's hurtful. You can't joke about that. That's the beauty of comedy. I welcome people tell me Chinese jokes because I laugh at them. I'm not offended because, uh, you know, to have fun in life, really enjoy life. Fundamentally, people are nice in this country. When they want to tease me, I tease them back. They tell me yeah. Chinese jokes. I tell them white jokes yeah. or whatever other jokes. So all these uh, tactics, it's very divisive. It, it, it make life just like a, a suffering place. When you talk about utopian society, our young people bought into, it's not utopian at all. Mao promised us as a communist leader, um, oh, we're gonna give you peasants a land. We're gonna give you intellectuals a free speech. We're gonna build a new China. Guess what? The peasants never got the land. The intellectuals were pushed to commit suicide, live on Chinese government food rationing coupons based on your party positions. Besides 100 million people died under communism. There are estimated 20 to 40 million people in China just died of mass starvation. Utopia never came. I had to eat red meat. Like a Venezuela people have to eat cat's meat today, they run out of cats, but the promise never came. There's no single communist country, socialist country that uh, really give people prosperity and good life. But the communist Marxists want you to believe their empty promise, free college, free, free health care, free this or free that. But that's not true. We had to pay for school. We had to pay for health care and we had to pay for lots of things. The only thing we did not pay it's community housing. Eight families share one bathroom, one water faucet. 
and dark light bulbs. That's the community housing you want to live in. You, you look at Cuba, you look at Venezuela, how quickly lost all their wealth and the promise never come. I don't want that happen to Americans. When companies took over, they also took over all the press, all the law enforcement, they controlled military, they controlled radios and newspapers and schools. So you had no alternative information anymore. Where do you go to get the true information except the old China history? We still had the industry, we had the commerce, but when the communists took over, all land belonged to the state. No more private property because they were bad people. You don't need to hate them. We're going to take over land from the rich land order. We're going to distribute to your all peasants. 70% of population at that time were peasants in China. So they believed in him. It sounds wonderful, right? It right. was a broken promise and the never come. So when you say this country, people start to buy into, oh, we're gonna take, we're gonna give to the poor, give to the have not. You don't want to rely on government because if they provide you everything, they can also take everything away from you and, and, and totally you know, enslave you. You want to be independent. You want to work hard on your own merit to achieve those good life. Say, if Americans are all independent minded, this current situation will never happen because people will be relying on themselves. I think the government knows once they put a fear in your mind, once they make you promises, that's what communists said. We don't have, we don't have to make a United States a communist, a socialist country um, by, by like a, a war. No, we don't have to fire one shot. You people will be fit. Socialism a little bit every year then you will be a communist country someday. That's what the Soviet Union communist leader said. And you say that it's already happening because yeah. our people bought into that, bought into that free stuff. Socialism, does that always lead to communism? Some people ask me that question in schools too. And I can always uh, quote something from Lenin. Lenin is the one of the, of course, Bolshevik leaders, like communist leaders. He said the goal of socialism is communism. That's what he said. Here's the difference. The communism will take away your properties and change your country, enslave you by force. Chair my mouth said, the political power is coming out of barrel of gun. That's why Communist Party in China control the military. They control the guns, where 1.4 billion Chinese are totally disarmed. You cannot have anything to protect yourself. Maybe you're catching knives, okay? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> socialism is to enslave people by votes. Just like the beginning of the Cuba, beginning of Venezuela, and they say, oh, we're gonna promise you this free stuff. You rely on government, we'll give you this, this, that. You vote for us. So I always tell people, when you vote for socialism, you are voting against yourself. The temporary promise is just temporary. They might never come or long-term is a total tragic, disastrous outcomes. Our kids don't know that because they don't know history. They hate the Nazis, but they don't tell them Nazis is originally a socialist nationalist party that Hitler belonged to. And then do, do they know how many people died under Nazi? They know, but how many people died under communism in Cambodia when they actually kill intellectuals wore glasses. If you were God's young interaction in Cambodia by Popa, he will kill you because he said, uh, you look different. You're not equal. We want everybody to look the same. Equity, right? Those are very superficial, just stupid stuff because we are talking about people are created equal in terms of equal protection under the law and equal opportunities. But they want to talk about equitable outcomes. That's a Marxist term, and we have to totally reject that. Our kids that uh, need to learn probably from their parents, since our primary purpose of public school now is basic introduction camps for the lefty ideology right now. Let's talk about that because you're uh, you're organizing a uh, a uh, protest against critical race theory this weekend. And you mentioned that you're seeing the shadows of indoctrination of communist China in critical race theory. Can you explain that? First of all, I, I, I reject the false claim by the critical race theory. It's based on this claim or accusation that America is a systemic 
racist country, and then all white people are born racist. How could the majority of people be condemned as a racist without individual character? Dr. King said, we judge people not based on their race and skin, but their content of their individual character. So I reject those two claims. Yes, there are individual cases, racism exists, and we need to overcome that by talking to each other, hang out with each other, respect each other, have conversations. The United States have achieved a lot. And if America is really that bad systemic racist country, everybody here was suffering for people of color, you tell me why did millions and millions of immigrants wanted to flee their own countries like me and come here to seek better life for ourselves. When I came here, I had nothing. I was offered homes, temporary living. And I feel like, oh, they were the most generous, kindest people. And they were white, so what? So how could you condemn people? So I want to organize this rally to stop the critical race theory indoctrination in our schools. Because I don't want what happened to me happen to our kids in schools where they were told you were born white, you were born racist, your parents were born racist, you need to take this homework to home, ask your parents to condemn themselves. My husband's white. I can tell my kids, your dad is racist because he's white, I'm not because I'm aging. It's like pretend to be facts and data supported by history, but it's not. So I hope people come to our rally 1 o'clock to 2 p.m. at the state capitol in Concord State House because Biden already talking about offering $1 billion to department education. But you got to teach critical race theory in your schools. We need to stop this. We are trying to pass a budget in New Hampshire right now and uh, we'll have some language into that budget to say we don't want our public institutions to use taxpayers' money to train people in our government to be anti-racist. Like Dr. Candy, read his book, How to Be Anti-Racist. Military, read his book, How to Be Anti-Racist. I did spend time to watch his YouTube videos, to listen to him. But there's no facts data back to his claim. It's all opinion. And it's a Marxist opinion. Same thing with Robin D'Angelo. Look at what she said. No facts, no data. If you look at, for example, even the, the police killing black people, right? I, I'm sure you're aware of that. No data back that up. Police, white policemen will just go out, like randomly target people if you are black. There's no data back that. But the real conversation, Gothic, should be why black people commit a higher proportion of percentage of crimes compared with their population percentage. Do they have good families? Do they live in poverty? Do they have good schools? Do they have a school choice in the big blue states, big blue cities? That's number one. The Democrats use black people to achieve their agenda, but they against school choice. How do our black brothers and sisters get good education to actually have skills to advance, advance themselves instead of just blame on the society, blame and on the white and ask government, give me some money. The real conversation should be how do we lift them up by having better education, by teaching them how to run business, by reducing government regulation. So you mentioned something just then where you were talking about how they were saying, you know, black people are being targeted in the streets by police officers and they're not providing enough data to support that. It's a little bit frustrating because it makes it seem like facts don't matter. And you mentioned before that when you were growing up in the uh, Cultural Revolution, they didn't want you to think independently. And I've also noticed something with the Stop Asian Hate. I don't know if you've been following that. Yes, yes. And I noticed a similar pattern where they were claiming that there's a lot of white supremacists that are attacking Asians. But then again, I look at the data and I'm seeing that black people are the most violent offenders. Have you noticed that too with the Stop Asian Hate as well? Yes, if you look at the 2018 Department of Justice data, the, the crime data talk about the different groups committed crimes on different groups. You are absolutely correct. The number one group to commit violent crimes to against agents are the people of color, especially the blacks. Whenever there's a white guy shooting and the criminal is white, 
that everybody is outraged based on media. But then when they and criminals are people of color, and then there's no outrage, there's no protest. So they also use COVID to use that against Trump to say Trump said the Chinese virus, why did you say that? The crime is going up, this or that, blame on him. The thing is so the crimes against Gaijins have been going on for many years. And as a Chinese immigrant, I was not offended by Wuhan virus, Chinese virus, because that's origin. And uh, I don't know why media always want to speak for us, think we're offended. And uh, they say, so now we're talking about South Africa variant, UK variant. It means like, we are using names, right? And how come there's no media pushback? Right. So media right now, I think they are just propaganda machines for the left. And lots of journalists who have some conscience, I always encourage them, you got to speak up because in China, the journalists have no press freedom. You got to be politically correct. You got to get a government license to be journalists. They will come after you too. If you slightly dif differentiate from their talking point, it's already happened to some people in the journalism field. They have to leave. The huge propaganda machine by Chinese Communist Party they have their propagandas and trolls and infiltrated into Western world very badly in the past decade, past decade. Have you heard about Confucius Institute? Yes, they, I have. They were in our schools and colleges to teach how wonderful Chinese culture is. Do they think they only teach Chinese culture and language? They make a communist party look good. And actually they were funded by Chinese government. And the Trump is the one to say, you got to get rid of that. Senator Rubio had a bill to say, if you take a Chinese government money, you cannot take American, the US government grant. So that kind of shut down now, but still they are everywhere in this country, in Australia, in EU, and they hire, there are 20 million internet influencers in social media to speak for them, to promote their image in the world. I cannot even go home now because they call me, I'm one of the criminals in China because I'm speaking up against the communism, against the Communist Party dictatorship. I found an older tweet, uh, a tweet of yours where you compared this young girl from TikTok. I don't know if you remember it. She said in the video, I'm going to stab you while you're struggling and bleeding out. And I'm going to show you my paper cut and say my cut matters too. And the caption you said was that this girl reminds you uh, of the Red Guards during China's Cultural Revolution. Help me understand, what similarities are you seeing? Say Red Guards are basically urban youth were used by Mao to achieve his agenda, to do his 10 years Cultural Revolution. I was one of them, but I never did uh, those uh, violent stuff because I was too young. But uh, we were indoctrinated anyway. And they want you to hate, they want you to be violent, and they want you to total loyal to your government, to him, not to your families, and not to your communities, and uh, not to each other. I, I, I want to tell people, I don't want to be enslaved ever again. I can never be silenced again. I lived in China for 24 years, I was silenced. I come to this country that took me 20 years in this country, to wake up, to get rid of my garbage of education I got from Chinese government, you know, indoctrination camps. That's 44 years of my life. Now I'm in my 50s. That's why I'm so passionate about what I'm doing. I was not allowed to vote. I was not allowed to think. I was not allowed to speak. And now I come to this country, I see all the young people are repeating, bought into the same crap that we were faded to. It's tragic, it's sad, but I just don't know how to wake up people. I need to talk more people like you, go to national TVs and get an interview nationally to tell people, let's rethink America, where are you going? I understand when something tragic happened to the community, to your family member, your emotion run high, people can get angry, but fundamentally, to have productive solutions and conversations, we need to come down and look at facts and data. Otherwise, it will be just manipulated.
by the people who truly wanted to enslave all of us, like communist Marxists. So I hope people will wake up. And some teachers are afraid to lose their job, so they have to teach what they're told to teach. So as parents, we need to push back to say, hey, superintendent, hey, school board members, what are you teaching my kids? I'm pulling them out. I'm putting my money out of private colleges or public universities. I'm putting my money out to homeschool my kids. I demand school choice because you are teaching them garbage. Back to the people of color, if you are trapped in inner city, poor performing schools, you have no school choice, what do you do? You have lots of time in your hands and you live on welfare, you have no father figure and no role models, what do you do with your time? Other people can feel that crap and to influence you, to get you to go out, to become straight gangs, to go riots, go looting. There's no moral left anymore. Looting is justified. That's what the Marxists tell you. Maybe later we'll be killing people is justified. How dangerous is that? Yeah. So I think you and I, because you are very articulate, very persuasive. I also want to tell people, even on this conservative side, we should not demonize anybody. We don't demonize Democrats and we don't want Democrats demonize Republicans. And there are lots of people in the middle of independence. We need to just have a calm conversation to say, we just want to live in peace. We want to promote love, tolerance, acceptance, unity. That's what our rally this Saturday is about. We will promote unity and love, not hate. Critical race theory is about division, hate and envy. If we give up, I don't know about you. I have no place to go. America is my home. Yeah. It's so, my refuge. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's entitled to be emotional, but if you constantly run on that, it's going to cloud your best judgment. And I think that's where we are right now. It's just, we're running on fumes. Yeah, here's, here's a good thing, Vanessa. Tell people being free human being, free people, means you are able to use your brain to think. If we just act our primary emotions, what is the difference between humans and animals? We need reason. We yeah. need the yeah. rational thinking. We need to look at data and facts to justify our talking points and rhetorics, especially our young people, they need rational conversations sometimes to say, hey, what you believe is not true. Let's look at this. And also, do you want to be self-employed entrepreneur someday? We still have this free market system in the United States. You can start your own business instead of just blow money and live on paycheck to paycheck. But how do you put that responsibility on your shoulder to say, I'm poor now, but I'm going to start my business. I'm going to save, I'm going to work on my ideas. And don't be afraid of failure. I failed in myself to employ the business for eight years before I become profitable. Remember, I could not speak English. I came here with nothing. I'm going to live American dream. I have two or three home businesses. What stopped you who were born in this country, who did not have even accent to speak your English to achieve your dream? So we need to have those conversations. We need to help each other out and demonize one group to another. It's just the identity politics that Marxists love for you to have. We don't want to fall into trap of identity politics. We need to be compassionate and inclusive for, you know, all Americans, doesn't matter what color skin you have, what race, where you come from, here is our home. That's our biggest common ground. This is our country. This is our home. You want your children to have a good future. You want you to have a good future. So keep doing what you're doing. I, I saw some of your video. I'm just really impressed with how you actually trying to communicate and with your readers and especially we, we need the minority groups to wake up. We don't want them to be used as lefty radical left to achieve their Marxist agenda because that agenda is not good for anybody except maybe top 1% of the ruling class. I'm really trying my best to get my messages out. So if you have a radio host in your state, introduce me to them more you know, the YouTubers like you, different groups. And uh, I also want to speak to students either online or in person, go to school classrooms to show my pictures from Mao's Cultural Revolution. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do my best 
for my new beloved country because as I said, America is home. And there's no place to go after America. Lily, thank you so much for having a conversation with me. This has been a really insightful. Everyone else, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, give it a like, give it a thumbs up. Wait, that's the same thing. Give it a like and hit subscribe uh, and click on the links in the description to go check out Lily Tang Williams' uh, Facebook and all the socials and whatnot. And please let me know if you have any other uh, rallies that you're uh, doing uh, because I would love to be a part of them. I'd love to meet you someday and you can come here interview me in person. I will take you to this Chinese Chinese restaurant in Chinatown in Boston. Ooh. And I saw people driving up from uh, Rhode Island. This is only one hour away to eat here. I know that's cool. I think the Rhode Island is so close. Okay. So we should be there to have some good Chinese food, you know? That sounds good. Sounds like a yeah. plan. Yeah, all right. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. If you want to help spread Lily's message, I'll have her contact info listed below and a direct link to this interview for you to re-upload on other platforms. Thanks for watching.